Hey guys, welcome back to PCN's channel. Today's video is about making a portable version of RetroArch using a memory stick. I've got a 64 uh, gigabyte memory stick, which for what I want it is, is absolutely fine. I've named it RA64GB, just so I know uh, what it is. Uh, so what we are going to do is we're going to make a portable version of RetroArch. So whichever one of our machines we use it on, um, it will it, it will run and all the settings everything will remain so for example if you're like me and you've got multiple machines you can put it in a memory stick and use it on your multiple machines ultimately you can take it out with you and use it at a friend's house so the first thing we're going to do and it, these are all recommendations so there's different ways of going about it uh, I just want to tell you guys like a way that I like using it so once you've got your memory stick in uh, format it uh, form, format the memory stick so it's nice and clean and what you want to do then is you want to go over to disk management so you want to find the RA64, which we know is drive E. So once you uh, click on that, we right, uh, right click on that, change drive letter path. Now, I would recommend that you pick a letter further down the alphabet, one that you're not really going to use. I, I like using X for RetroArch. I don't know why, you know, X, X-Wing, X-Men, whatever, but I, I like using X. So once we've once we've named that x that's always going to be x when we plug it into this pc um now what you want to do as well is if when you use it on another pc you want to do the same thing you want to find the drive and you want to rename it uh, to x because everything we do or save every playlist uh everything is going to be looking um for the x drive so now that is now our x drive so what we can do is we can go ahead and download retroarch which we're going to do now so uh with you we're, we're downloading and we're using the windows 10 version um as stated in previous videos i'm running a 64-bit operating system we're not going to go installer we want to go download the zip uh so we can put it exactly where we want it so go ahead click the download if you've got if you're using an older 32-bit system you know maybe you want to do a 30-bit one in 32-bit one in case you get around your grandmother's and and her pc's like 20 years old which will probably be a 32-bit system and you know you you can you can play on that generally the machines i'm around the 64-bit and that's what we're going to do okay our download has completed so let's go and have a look at our download again as i always say do your due diligence and always just scan uh with uh with whatever antivirus software you've got i'm quite happy with uh, windows defender that's going to go ahead and scan that we just want to make sure there's no threats or there's nothing malicious on there okay here you go that's finished scanning it took approximately i don't know maybe 30 seconds no threats found so as far as we know that is clean uh even though i know retro is okay i'm just in a habit of scanning everything and i recommend you guys do that as well okay so where it's finished scanning let's go into the retro art zip unzip it using your favorite unzipping software uh, i'm going to use um i'm going to use uh, 7zip here so let's just extract it here i know you can do extract here i'm, I'm just in a habit of doing extract files and it, it sometimes creates a double folder but I, i'm fine with that so um yeah let's just wait for that to extract right now that we have it extracted what we want to do is right here we go so this folder here we want to open up our memory stick which we named ra64gb name it whatever you like and we've given the drive path the letter x so we just want to uh, copy and paste this over here in this case i'm dragging it because it's going from d drive to x drive uh, in previous videos <laughs> where, where, where i've dragged it it's actually moved it which is just a bad habit so sometimes it's it's worth just doing you know right click copy and paste uh, but work whichever method works for you so let's just wait for that to copy across okay awesome stuff retro uh, arch is now copied over one thing that i recommend is let's put a shortcut on our memory stick so we don't have to open this up and uh, look for the exe so let's just uh, on this one um open up yeah open, go to uh go to our drive x the one uh what what we what the letter we've allocated our drive let's just look for the retro arch exe which is over here so what you want to do is uh right click just drag it on you're dragging it onto pretty much the same drive anyway but you drag it onto the next one where you want your shortcut create shortcut here there you go we've got a shortcut that will launch it now this will make it a little bit easier so um next thing we want to do is let's make a folder here called roms there may be a folder called ROMs within RetroArch. I, I've never used that. I always have my ROMs somewhere else. So let's just create a folder here called ROMs. And this is where we're going to put our games. Right, okay, so there's a, there's a few things I cannot help you with. One of them um, is if you've got BIOS files, you want to put them in the systems folder. So uh, again, I can't tell you where they are. But um, 
the internet's your friend google's your friend find the bias files and that's where you want to put them um in regards to roms we're gonna we're, we're gonna move them into this folder now i i recommend uh no intro roms i use them and and i like them i like them a lot so for the purpose of this video we're gonna go and we're gonna put the sega mega drive set in here so let that just copy over into your roms folder so now we know where everything is we've got a retro arch on our memory stick we've named the memory stick x any computer that we're going to plug that in we know we need to go into disk management and change uh, the drive path to x so it, it finds everything and we're just we're just copying that over so we'll have uh, we'll have mega drive on here shortly Right, okay, uh, once uh, our ROMs have copied over, like they have over here, let's go ahead and close this folder. So let's go back into our memory stick. So here we have RetroArch, here we have our ROMs. So let's go ahead and open, open RetroArch now with the shortcut we've created. And here we go we are in retro watch so again in here you can do all your settings um stay tuned to the channel uh you know um what we want to do first of all so let, let's go let's load a core we don't have any core so let's download a core and we are gonna go so we've got uh sega mega drive game so well, let's go and download a core that supports sega mega drive which is okay so i quite like i quite like um pico drive so let's go ahead and do that. So we've got a core uh, in here now. So I'm not used to this front end. I usually have the X, uh, XMB one, but we, we're good with this one. So let's just go. All right, we, what we want to do now is import content. We want to scan a directory. And here you go, the drive. So we put the ROMs uh, on the X folder. So X within ROMs, uh, Sega Mega Drive. So what we can do is scan this directory, and here you go. As you can see at the bottom, it is now scanning uh, all the Mega Drive games. So wait for the scanning to complete, and then we'll have a list of Mega Drive games ready to play. So you just need to repeat this step with every system. Uh, as stated earlier, make sure you've got your BIOS files for the best compatibility. Uh, some uh, some systems you don't need BIOS files for. They've got uh, there's some inbuilt within the emulator, or they, you know they've got. They've got processes in there that help the games run. Um, so yeah, that's 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 pretty much it. We'll just we'll run we'll run a Genesis game, and uh, hopefully it's all running. Here we are. Scanning has completed. So now we should see at the bottom here. Here you go. So that's the only system we've got. Mega Drive. We put the ROMs on. We we've scanned them now. I can't emphasize enough before you put on a ROMs or put the ROMs on before you scan them, make sure you have downloaded a core or was, you know, it will scan it and the ROMs won't show up. So let's just go over and try a game and, and hopefully it works, but this is pretty much it. You have now got a portable version of um, RetroArch and just, just be sure that wherever you go, uh, you name, um, you name the drive as, um, as X. Okay, so I still haven't done all the settings. It's not running full screen yet, but that's fine. I can hit Alt and enter it. It will go full screen. But as you can see, it's running. Um, again, I'll keep saying it. This will work on any Windows 64-bit PC because we have a 64-bit um, uh, we have a 64-bit version of RetroArch running here. Um, just make sure whatever letter uh, you assign to this drive. In this case, we've we've given it the letter X. You go into disk management and you give it that letter. Uh, it will not work if the letter is different because it will be looking in all the wrong places. Uh, I really hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it's been helpful to you. If it has been, let me know in the comments below. Um, as always, thank you for watching and until the next one, PCN out.